Cirrhosis. USM Low. Step 1. Cirrhosis is a diffuse pathological process, characterized by fibrosis and conversion of normal liver architecture to structurally abnormal nodules known as regenerative nodules. It can arise from a variety of causes and is the final stage of any chronic liver disease. My name is Marcela Rocha, I am a MedCal student from Brazil and we talk about cirrhosis. Welcome. Cirrhosis Case A 42-year-old man presents to his doctor for a checkup. He has not seen a physician in several years. He has a history of alcohol abuse and 40-pack-year history of smoking. On review of systems, the patient reports petechiae and increased bruising for the past six months. He has also had a loss of appetite and 20 pounds weight loss during this time. Physical examination reveals a malnourished white male who appears older than his stated age. He is jaundiced with temporal wasting, mild gynecomastia, palmar erythema, spider angiomas, and edema of the lower extremities. The abdomen distended with shifting dullness. Patient images. Liver palms erythema of adult alcoholic. Caput medusa, dilated superficial, superior and inferior epigastric veins radiating from a central large venous barracks. Icterus or jaundice. Gynecomastia. Edema of the lower extremities. Abdomen distended with shifting dullness. Laboratory findings are as follows. What is the most likely diagnosis? What are the causes of this patient's gynecomastia, petechia, and easy bruising? How does ascites form? Epidemiology. Cirrhosis is an important cause of morbidity and mortality. Hospital admissions related to liver cirrhosis have increased year on year in the U.S. Liver disease is the third biggest cause of premature mortality in the UK with 62,000 working life years lost. In 2017, the global prevalence of compensated and decompensated cirrhosis was estimated to be 112 million cases and 10.6 million cases, respectively. Cirrhosis caused more than 2.2 million deaths worldwide in 2017. In the US and Europe, the majority of cases of chronic liver disease are accounted for by viral hepatitis, alcohol-related liver disease, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The prevalence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis has increased in parallel with the obesity epidemic. Etiology Cirrhosis can derive from any chronic liver disease. The most common causes of cirrhosis in the Western world are alcohol-related liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, chronic viral hepatitis, metabolic disorders, autoimmune liver diseases, biliary obstruction, drugs and toxins, cryptogenic cirrhosis. Pathophysiology Hepatic fibrosis occurs in most patients with any type of chronic liver injury and may ultimately evolve into cirrhosis with nodule formation. The central event in hepatic fibrosis is the activation of hepatic stellate cells, which are the major source of extracellular matrix. This leads to an accumulation of collagen types I and III in the hepatic parenchyma and space of DES. The result of collagen deposition in the space of DES is termed capillarization of the sinusoids, a process in which the hepatic sinusoids lose their characteristic fenestration, thereby altering the exchange between hepatocytes and plasma. With activation, hepatic stellate cells become contractile, which may be a major determinant of increased portal resistance during liver fibrosis and cirrhosis. Approach The evaluation of a patient with suspected chronic liver disease and cirrhosis should begin with a detailed history identifying the presence of risk factors for the different causes of cirrhosis. Patients should then undergo a thorough physical examination in order to elicit any signs of chronic liver disease or complications of cirrhosis. A full panel of blood tests should be undertaken to establish the etiology of chronic liver disease and to ascertain the degree of disease severity. An upper gastrointestinal endoscopy should be performed in patients with cirrhosis to screen for esophagogastric. Cirrhosis should be differentiated from non-cirrhotic conditions that can also lead to portal hypertension. History Patients with cirrhosis may be asymptomatic or have non-specific constitutional symptoms, such as fatigue, weakness, and weight loss, as well as recurrent infections and decreased libido. 
Symptoms of decompensation include Abdominal distension due to ascites Vomiting of blood, hematemesis, and black stool, melina, secondary to variceal hemorrhage Altered mental status and hepatic encephalopathy Peripheral edema Jaundice our patient has ascites, palmar erythema, lower extremity edema, and gynecomastia, and can suggest a diagnosis of liver failure and he has a history of alcohol abuse. This is a social history and risk factors. Other risk factors Drug history It is important to elicit the use of over-the-counter medications, vitamins, and herbal and dietary supplementation, which may account for liver injury and may not be volunteered by the patient. Family history, chronic hepatitis B. Past medical history, any history of metabolic syndromes, diabetes, dyslipidemia, obesity, hypertension, or autoimmune disorders should be sought. Investigations. Liver function tests. Gamma glutamyl transferase, GGT. Serum albumin. Serum sodium. Prothrombin time. Platelet count. Antibodies to hepatitis C virus. Hepatitis B surface antigen. Criteria. Child Putercot. One of the most commonly used scoring systems to determine disease severity in cirrhosis. Model of end-stage liver disease, MELD. A more recent scoring system for the determination of severity in cirrhosis, the MELD score is electronically calculated from the serum bilirubin, sodium, creatinine and clotting, INR and prothrombin time, by a specific computer program. This is the classification system used for the allocation of livers for transplantation in the U.S. What is the most likely diagnosis? Alcoholic cirrhosis of the liver. Findings include ascites, palmar erythema, lower extremity edema, and gynecomastia, and can suggest a diagnosis of liver failure. The moderately elevated transaminase levels suggest a chronic process, loss of large numbers of hepatocytes limit dramatic elevations seen in an acute hepatic pathologies. Further indicators of chronicity include decreased albumin, elevated PT and PTT, thrombocytopenia, and decreased hematocrit. What are the causes of this patient's gynecomastia, petechia, and easy bruising? The liver normally degrades estrogen. In liver failure, circulating serum levels of estrogen are higher, causing gynecomastia and palmar erythema. Spider angiomas are also caused by elevated estrogen in cirrhotic patients. How does ascites form? Ascites refers to a pathological buildup of fluid in the peritoneal cavity. The most common cause is cirrhosis. Portal hypertension is prerequisite for ascites formation, however, many other factors contribute. In particular, systemic vasodilation and reduction in systemic vascular resistance, SVR, contribute to activation of endogenous vasoconstrictors, including the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, RAAS. This allows for sodium and water retention. Sodium restriction and diuretic therapy for ascites. Ascites is the most common complication of cirrhosis. Treatment algorithm. As cirrhosis is the pathological end stage of any chronic liver disease, it is essential to treat the underlying causative condition. Oral direct acting antivirals are considered a first line treatment for chronic hepatitis C virus infection. Regimens depend on the genotype and presence or absence of cirrhosis. Local guidance should be consulted. Superimposed hepatic insult may be prevented through the avoidance of alcohol and other hepatotoxic drugs, example, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, and high doses of paracetamol, 2G-day immunization against hepatitis A and B for susceptible patients, management of metabolic risk factors, maintenance of adequate nutrition, and regular exercise. Monitoring for complications. Cirrhosis is associated with serious complications including portal hypertension causing ascites, further complicated by spontaneous bacterial peritonitis and hepatic hydrothorax, gastroesophageal varices and portosystemic. Encephalopathy, acute kidney injury and hepatopulmonary syndromes, portopulmonary hypertension, and hepatocellular carcinoma. Prompt detection and treatment of these complications is essential in order to minimize related morbidity and mortality.
Imaging tests include abdominal ultrasound for the detection of ascites, upper gastrointestinal endoscopy for the detection of gastroesophageal varices, and abdominal ultrasound, computed tomography, CT, or magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, for the detection of hepatocellular carcinoma. Liver transplantation. A survival benefit from undergoing liver transplantation is seen when the model of end-stage liver disease, MELD, score is greater than or equal to 15. Patients not suitable for liver transplantation should be considered for transjugular interhepatic portosystemic shunt, TIPSS, placement.